Lisa, I've never seen an Outlook season like this. My head is spinning over the cuteness, as John aptly puts it, over the, the surgical nature of where we're going to be the third week of May. I don't buy it. Give us a bigger, broader vision so I can sleep at night. <laughs> well, look, I, I think our bigger, broader vision is that, you know, right now we're in this period of time where we're still resolving this, what had been a profound mix shift, in our humble opinion, between goods and services. And so you're seeing this disconnect where there's still, we're exhausting pent up demand uh, for services. We're going through the holidays for a lot of folks. Uh, they're still kind of playing out that they're, you know, I haven't celebrated with family and friends and traveled across the country or quite frankly, across the world for two and a half years. And so we're still seeing that. Uh, but to us, what the risk is, is that the consumer, while the labor market is strong and we, we're in the camp that says there are structural changes in the labor market that are going to keep it robust, uh, the reality is, is that consumers are starting to run out of dough. And, uh, you know, the savings rate is now back where we were uh, in 2007 at 2.3 percent. That's 15 year low. Uh, we've got credit card revolving balances, you know, building up. We're way through the, the 2019 high. And so, you know, as we get into 2023, we think everything rests with the consumer. And we really think that this could go either way. And that what analysts seem to be uh, uh, forgetting, and look, I'm going to throw CEOs in there. Uh, you know, yes, CEO confidence is deteriorating, but I still think a lot of corporate guidance is delusional. Uh, in terms of the fact that they, over the past two years, benefited from both a pull forward in volume and, you know, seven, eight percent pricing power. Um, so you're talking about nominal top lines that were in, growing in the double digits. If, if, if the Fed succeeds, if the Fed pauses, which is what all the enthusiasm is about, that pricing power at best is going to have and at worst is going to go away completely uh, at the same time that your volumes are slowing. And it's that kind of negative operating leverage that I just don't think is in the numbers. You know, and, and Tom and, 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 and John and Lisa, I know you guys know me and, and know I started my career covering companies like Caterpillar and Deer. I know what negative operating leverage looks like. Uh, Mike Wilson, my colleague, you know, started his career, you know, as as uh, you know, as a specialist on semiconductors. He knows what negative operating leverage looks like, uh, and we don't think that that there's enough attention to that in the current consensus numbers. So, Lisa, when you say that CEOs are delusional, are you talking about the whole of corporate America, or a specific slice of it? Which one is it? Yeah, it's more it's more the specific slice of it, but it's a slice that unfortunately at, at the minute, uh, you know, uh, dominates the, the the market cap and the weight uh, of how we're comprising, you know, consensus estimates. And so, um, you know, I, I just think it's going to be a rude awakening for uh, a lot of folks in some of these mega cap names and some of the consumer discretionary leverage names in the e-commerce, social media ecosystems, which which increasingly are purely cyclical. Um, and and uh, I think we need to remember that. So how much more of a downside do you see in some of the tech world, considering how much we've already seen losses there? Yeah. Um, you know, our best guess, and, and you guys I know have, have spoken to Mike regularly, um, you know, he most recently took down uh, his 2023 estimates to 195. Uh, I think the consensus, the forward consensus is still just below 230 uh, next year. So, you know, we're looking for a number that's that's 15 percent below that. Is the austerity that's hitting some of these companies, Lisa, changing your mind on any of this? When Andy Jassy and Amazon start considering cuts, when Meta and Zuckerberg start considering cuts, does that change your view? Um, it, um, very modestly, because, I, again, I think um, that, you know, certainly does that help marginally in the decimal points on 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 margin uh yeah sure uh but i'm not sure that it's going to to make up for what we think is going to be material loss uh of momentum on that top line from loss of volume and loss of pricing